Hello, my name is Victor Borges from DNVGL Software, and we are here today to discuss uh, about design optimization in the oil and gas industry. Right? Um, I believe one of the biggest challenges we have when designing an oil platform is the redundancies that we want to place in our system. Right? So, uh, in the oil and gas, we have traditionally used a methodology that is called RAM analysis. RAM analysis is a combination of the Monte Carlo method and an even driven simulation technique, right? Uh, together with these two uh, very, very well established techniques, we have the reliability block diagrams. The reliability block diagrams, they help us to connect our system logically, right? So there are pretty much two types of configurations uh, in the reliability block diagram technique. You can have uh, equipment items in series, like this one, or you could have equipment items in parallel, like for example, if we have a second pump there, right? So if we have a second pump here, we can then have an equipment item in parallel, right? So the idea of the reliability, reliability block diagrams is, if this item fails, right, I need to shut down my entire production because there is no connection between these two points, right? Whereas with the parallel blocks, what we can actually see is that if I lose this pump here, I can keep producing through the second one, right? So finding and trying to optimize this type of item is one of the biggest challenges we have when designing an oil platform. Um, but in the oil and gas industry, it's not that simple because then we have to start thinking about capacities, right? So let's, let's look at this graph. So when we are designing an oil platform, right, we then have to think about uh, the production rates and the expected um, production for the platform. So we have this graph, which is production rate against time, right? Uh, in the oil, uh, for the oil, we do expect to see a declining profile, right? We expect to see something like this, because oil is finite and it's coming from the wells, and the more we take out, you know, the, the less we have in there, right? So let's assume that we start producing this at the year zero, right? We start producing 100,000 barrels per day, right? So that's the year zero, right? You know, at some point, let's say year five, at the middle of the life of the system, we then see at this point that we are producing actually 50,000 barrels a day. So this is pretty much half capacity we had at the beginning of the life of the system. So let's go back to our example now. Uh, looking at these two pumps, when we are designing this system, we need to look into the peak capacity of our uh, production, which in this case is 100 barrels a day, right? So if I don't want to have any bottleneck in my system, I need to look at these, these pumps. They need to be able to produce, at the very least, 100,000 barrels a day, right? Um, but this could actually have multiple configurations. You can have this pump uh, running with a two times 50% configuration. You can have this pump running with a two times 100% configuration. You can have only one pump. Why not, right? So, so this is the main question. This is what we are trying to answer today. We are trying to answer what is the best one? Is it better to have a two times 50% or is it better to have a two times 100%? or it's better to have only one pump, right? Uh, why, why are we actually looking to this? You know, Victor, why, why are we looking to this? Uh, if you look into a two times 50% configuration, right? So you're looking to two times 50% configuration. It means that we have two pumps, all right? So two pumps. And uh, if we are talking about 50%, it means that we are talking about 50% of the peak capacity, which in this case is 50,000 barrels per day, per pump. 50,000 barrels per day, per pump, right? But then if you look into the two times 100%, 
We then look into two pumps, right? And each one of them are actually running with 100,000 barrels per day. So this is a two times 100% type of system, right? So in, from a CapEx pers perspective, right, we are talking about buying two small pumps, or maybe buy two big pumps, or maybe buy a single pump, right? So when it comes to cost, you know, we are talking about something like this is two monies, this is like three monies, very expensive, and this is the cheapest one, right? So, you know, we, we have to look into this, right? We have to look into what are the best, you know, return on investment when you're looking into designing this, this oil system, right? But another very, very important point is that since we have the constant rate, so each pump can produce with a constant rate, uh, the two t the, for example, the two times 50% configuration is going to change uh, its spare capacity with time. The two, t the two times 100% is always going to be fully redundant, right? So if one fails, the other one will kick in and produce right away. But the, the two times 50% at the beginning of the life of the system, we see if I lose one of my pumps, I actually lose 50% of production, right? Just that. But at this point here, I'm actually producing only at 50,000 barrels a day, right? So if I lose one pump, I can actually keep producing with my other pump, and that's all I need. I only need one pump. So the two times 50% system after year five becomes a two times 100% system. That's very interesting, right? Um, so now let's, try to, let's go to the software and try to understand better how the simulation takes care of this. All right, so now we are back from the whiteboard and I'm going to show you how to save $75 million uh, in three minutes. So we go back, we go from 106 million of loss to perhaps 31 million, right? So that's pretty much saving $75 million, right? So where do we start? I think the first point we start, let's go to our base case, right? So the base case is the compilation of all the information you have available about a certain project, right? So you have all your process flow diagrams, you have your pen IDs, you have the description of your process, and you build up your base case, right? So the base case is, uh, in, in, in this particular scenario, in this particular case that we're looking at, we are looking at uh, oil production system, which has uh, four wells feeding uh, an oil platform, a central, pro central processing facility, right? So the idea of this particular model is to look into how much oil we are producing, given that we, we are going to see failures, we are going to see maintenance constraints, we are going to see operational bottlenecks, right? Uh, this system is operating for 10 years, as you can see in the simulator parameters, right? We will be running this simulation for 100 uh, life cycles, so pretty much I'm saying that we are running 10 years 100 times. Uh, the failure data that we're going to define is in years, the repair data is in hours, and we have the cost data in dollars, right? So that's from, uh, from where I can actually derive that the number, the $110 million of loss. Uh, so if you look at the, the main screen here, we can see that's the block flow these are the, this is the block flow diagram, right? The block flow diagram uh, looks into the logical connection between the different units, just like the reliability block diagram, as I explained before. So if I lose the tower one, I can keep producing from tower two, three, and four. And if I lose for my central processing facility, I have a complete blockage of production, so I cannot produce. So it's very easy to understand. The concept is very easy to understand. The same concept applies when I double click in each unit, I'll get a reliability block diagram, which as I, uh, as I explained before, is a logical connection between the different systems, right? So you can see things in parallel, you can see things in series, and if I double click in any one of these systems, right, I 
can go down and you can see the hierarchical tree building on the left hand side. I can go down to the failure remote level, right? Uh, the failure remote level is what is going to indicate to us how many failures we should expect from this system. So for example, looking at this particular critical failure remote, we can see that we have an exponential distribution right, associated to it. Uh, we have 10 years of mean time to failure, MTTF. Right? And we also have a repair time of 48 hours. So we can see that we should expect a failure every 10 years and when it fails, we should expect a 48 hours downtime, right? So if I gather all this information, I put that into Maros, uh, I can then run the simulation. So if I go back to my top level, the top level of my tree, and I run the simulation again, right? Uh, we're going to run the Monte Carlo method now. Uh, I'm going to generate the animation so we can understand what's happening. And I'm going to run the simulation. Right? So what we expect to see here, now we expect to see uh, the Maros is estimating the different life cycles for the system and we are going to see the convergency of the simulation to a specific value for of the production efficiency. Right? So you can see here that we are getting close to 97.2%. Right? Um, Maros is, is very uh, well established in the oil and gas industry and it has been helping to optimize uh, design for oh, over 30 years. So it's a very, very well established tool. Uh, we have more than 1,000 projects done in Maros, so, so it's very traditional in the oil and gas industry. Uh, when you finish the simulation, right, you get pretty much three KPIs. You get the production efficiency, 97.2. So this is the actual production referred to the potential production. The potential production is very easy to estimate because that's how much our wells can produce. That's it, right? So the, the actual production, that's, what, that's the difficult part because we need to, then we need to use the Monte Carlo method to estimate the failures, to estimate the losses, right? So this is one KPI, production efficiency, also known as production availability. Uh, the second one is the annual production, right? So the annual production, you can see how much production we should expect every year, right? And if you have, for example, an aging facility, you should expect to see the blue uh, line increasing over time, which is not really the case here, right? But if I click on uh, each year, I can see the monthly. If I click again, I can see the, the daily. And I can actually expand this view to see the entire facility, right? So the potential we have is actually is if we had all the green here, this will be is our potential. The blue indicates the losses, right? And the third and I guess the most important KPI we have is the criticality analysis, right? So the criticality analysis is going to indicate uh, the bad actors of our system, right? So you can tell right away what is the most critical system in our uh, oil production field, right? Uh, the seawater is contributing to 78% of losses, right? So this is our most critical item. If I click on that, I can, I can look at the lift pump. The lift pump is the most critical one within this system, the seawater system. You can see that we're building up on the top here. If I click again, I can see the lift pump actually is a system that is, com uh, is um, defined with two other equipment items the lift pump and the lift pump case on, right? And the lift pump is the most critical one, and I click again, I can see the critical one, uh, the critical failure mode is the, the one shutting down the system the most, right? So these are the three main KPIs, right? But then we can start looking into the economics, right? So if I click here, I can see that because of my uh, performance of 97.2%, I'm losing $106 million, right? So this is the negative NPV. So this is focusing on the losses, right? Uh, the idea of the negative NPV is that we, this is the amount of money we can recover if we have a better design or a better operation or a better maintenance strategy, right? So if I go back to my executive summary, I can go up to the criticality chart again, and I can say, Maros, would you please show me uh, this system, right? And it's a, you go right-click, view item, 
and Marius is going to show you, oh, this system is in series, right? So if I double click on this, I'll see the lift pump is also in series. And below this, I have the failure mode. But if I go up, I can actually see that the seawater is also in series. So every time this, the lift pump goes down, right? So look here. Every time this, the lift pump goes down, we shut down the entire system. And then we, we need to ask ourselves the question we did uh, in the whiteboard. Is it better to have a 2 times 100% pump, for example, perhaps a 2 times 50% pump? Let's focus on the example of 2, two times 100% pump, right? So what if this pump is, has a redundant pump, which is 2 times 100%, so it's fully redundant, right? I can then come here, say with a different name, you know, say, let's say 2 times 100%. Yes, and what if I run this again, right? So now I'm running my base case with a design change, right? So I can rerun this with uh, four cores. <clears throat> if I rerun this, uh, we are going to see again the graph of uh, the running efficiency, where we can actually see the um, the convergence of the of the simulation, right? Uh, and you can tell just by this graph that we have an increase on production efficiency, right? So now the line is averaging into a different levels, 99.2, right? So do remember that before we got, we got 97.2. So if we get something around 99.2, it means a 2% increase on production efficiency, right? I mean, 2% increase in production efficiency over 10 years is a massive amount of uh, oil being recovered, right? And uh, that's what you need to think about. You are recovering production over 10 years. It's not only like, a, a, a very, very short period of time, right? So again, yeah, there you go, 99.2%. So increase 2% um, um, of efficiency compared to the previous case, right? And where is our seawater? Our seawater is actually hidden within the graph now. So we can see here it's actually at this point. And if I click on that, I can see that those two pumps are now the most critical within this item. But this item is only contributing with 6% of the losses now, so it's been reduced quite a lot. Um, but then I think all of you might be wondering how much money we saved. And if I go to the economic analysis, oh, look at that. Now we say we are only losing $30 million. So do remember, the first the base case, we were actually losing $105 million. And now we are losing $30 million which pretty much means it's $75 million difference. And, um, and that's it. So that's how you optimize your design in the oil and gas industry. Um, so that's it, that's the Maros. Uh, if you have any questions, please do get in touch at software at dnvgl.com. And thank you.